So you might be wondering why I went off into permutations and combinations in the probability playlist, and I think you'll learn in this video. So let's say I want to figure out the probability. Let's say the prob I'm going to flip a coin eight times, and it's a fair coin. And I want to figure out the probability of getting exactly three out of eight heads. So I say three eight heads, but three of my flips are going to be heads, and the rest are going to be tails. So how do I think about that? Well, let's go back to one of the early definitions we use for probability. And that says it's the probability of anything happening is the probability of the number of equally probable events in which what we're stating is true. So in which we, the number of events, the number of, event, uh, I guess, trials or situations in which we get three heads. And exactly three heads. We're not saying greater than three heads. So four heads won't count, and two heads won't count. Five heads won't. Only three heads. Um, and then over the total number of equally probable trials. So total number of total total number, not trials. Total number of equally possible outcomes. I should be using the word outcomes. So just with the word outcomes, it should be the total number of outcomes in which what we're saying happens. So we get three heads over the total of possible outcomes. So let's do the bottom part first. Let's do the bottom part first. What are the total possible outcomes if I'm flipping a fair coin eight times? Well, the first time I flip it, I either get heads or tails. So I get two outcomes. And then when I flip it again, I get two more outcomes for the second one. And then you know how many total outcomes? Well, that's two times two, because I could have got two in the first, two in the second flip. And then essentially, we multiply 2 times the number of flips, right? So that's 5, 6, 7, 8. And that equals 2 to the 8. So the number of outcomes is just going to be 2 to the, the total number of flips. And hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, if, if not, you might want to rewatch some of the earlier videos. But that's the easy part. So there's 2 to the 8th possible outcomes when you flip a fair coin 8 times. So how many of those outcomes are going to result in exactly Three heads. Let's think of it this way. Let's let's give a name to each of our flips. Let's give a name to them. So let me make a little column. We'll call these the flips. This is my flips column. And I don't know. I could name them anything. I could name them Larry, Curly, Mo. I could name them the. Uh, and well, I would need five more names for them. But I, you know, I could name them the seven dwarves or the eight dwarves, really, because I have eight flips. Um, but I could, you know, I'll just name, I'll number the flips. Flips one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm the god of probability. And essentially, I need to just pick three of these flips that are going to result in heads. So another way to think about it is th these could be eight people. And, I, you know, I could pick which of these, you know, how many ways can I pick three of these people to put into the car? Or how many ways can I pick three of these people to sit in chairs? And it doesn't matter the order that I pick them in, right? It doesn't matter if I say the people that are going to get in the car are going to be people 1, 2, and 3, or if I say 3, 2, and 1, or if I say 2, 3, and 1. Those are all the same um, combination, right? So similarly, if I'm just picking flips and I have to say, OK, Three of these flips are going to be are going to get into the heads car, or are going to sit on. You know, heads is like they're sitting, they're people sitting down. I don't want to confuse you too much, but essentially, I'm just going to choose three things out of the eight. So I, I'm essentially just saying, how many combinations can I get where I pick three out of these eight? And so that should immediately ring a bell that that we're we're essentially saying out of eight things, eight we're going to choose three. And that's our that's you know how many how many combinations of three can we pick of eight and that's we went over in the last video, and let's do it with the formula first. So let me write the formula up here just so you remember it. But I, I also want to give you the intuition again for the formula. So in general we said n choose k. That is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. So in this situation, it would be that would equal eight factorial over three factorial times what eight minus k times five factorial. Or another way of writing this, this would be eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one over. I'll just write three factorial for a second. 
then times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And of course, that and that cancel out. And all you're left with is 8 times 7 times 6 over 3 factorial. And I did this for a reason, because I want you to, to re-get the intuition for at least for this part of the formula. That's a just essentially just saying, how many permutations can I, you know, how many ways can I pick three things out of eight? And that's essentially saying, well, before I pick anything, I can pick one of eight. Then I have seven left to pick from for the, you know, second spot. And then I have six left to pick for the third spot, right? And so that's essentially the number of permutations. But since we don't care, you know, if we picked it, what order we picked them in, we need to divide by the number of ways we can rearrange three things. And that's where the three factorial comes from. And so we're just, hopefully I didn't confuse you, but you know, if I did, you can go back to this formula for the binomial coefficient. But it's good to have the intuition. And then well, once we're at this point, we can just uh, calculate this. Well, what's this? This is 8 times 7 times 6 over 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 6. So 6 cancels out, so it's 8 times 7. So there's 8 times 7, or what is that, 50, 56? Right, 56. Yeah, that's equal to 56. So there's 56 different ways to pick three things out of eight. Or if I have eight people, there's 56 ways of of uh, of picking three people to sit in the car, or you know, however you want to view it. But if I have eight flips, there's 56 ways of picking three of those flips to be heads. So let's go to our original probability problem. What is the probability that I get three out of eight heads? Well, it's the probability. Um, it's the number of ways I can pick three out of those eight, so it equals 56, over the total number of outcomes, right? The total number of outcomes is 2 to the eighth. Another way I could write that, 56, let me unseparate, that's 8 times 7, 8 times 7 over 2 to the eighth. 8 is 2 to the third, right? Let me, let me erase some of this. Not with that color. Let me erase that. Erase all of this just so I have space. And I will switch colors for variety. Let me use the small pen. OK, so I'm back. All right, so 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third times 7. This is all just mathematical simplification, but it's useful. Over 2 to the eighth. And so if we just divide both sides, but the, top, the numerator and the denominator by 2 to the third, this becomes 1. This becomes 2 to the fifth. And so it becomes. 7 over 32. Is that right? So it's the, if I were to pick 3 out of 8, yep, I think that is right. And, and so what does that turn out to be? Let me get my calculator. I have to make careless mistakes. Let me see, my calculator seems to have disappeared. Let me get it back. There it is. OK, 7 divided by 32 is equal to 0.21875. Equals 0.21875, which is equal to 21, 21 point, you know, if I were to round roughly, 21.9% chance. So there's a, a little bit better than 1 in 5 chance that I get exactly 3 out of the 8 flips as heads. Hopefully I didn't confuse you, and now you know you can apply that to pretty much anything. You could say, well, what is the probability of getting, if I flip a, f a fair coin, of getting exactly seven out of eight heads? Or you could say, what's the probability of getting, um, you know, two out of a hundred heads? And you could, you could, you know, use it the exact same way we did this problem. I'll see.